Rhodococcus equine pneumonia, the silent killer of foals. There is nothing so amazing and satisfying as watching a foal be born into this world. Imagine this, you have a pregnant mare <clears throat> that for 11 months now, you took to the vet, bought supplements, prepared a foaling stall, critiqued her nutrition, and pampered every day. Finally, one day, after all your anxious waiting, you walk into the barn and see that she is in labor. Suddenly, you start running around frantically, ensuring everything is in order for your new addition to be brought safely into the world. After hours of waiting, all your hard work and time from the past 11 months is not only paid off, but completely forgotten, as you see a new foal hit the ground healthy. Little do you know, the past 11 months was the easy part, and the real challenge has just begun. Within the first month of that baby's life, pneumonia can grab a hold of their immune systems and not only threaten the life of that foal, but can spread throughout your farm to every foal. Pneumonia can affect every 1 in 10 foals born and has an average mortality rate of 20% if treated. On some farms, the mortality rate can reach 80%. This poses the question why so many of us have foals and know nothing about this threat. I have raised three babies now and I never had the foresight to check for the signs of pneumonia in other foals before introducing my own foal to the herd. Because pneumonia has the ability to spread like a wildfire and have detrimental effects on our foals, we need to know the process of this pathogen so we can identify, treat, and prevent it. The first step to this is asking, what is pneumonia? Pneumonia, just like in humans, is an infection of the lungs. This infection causes inflammation and pus, also known as phlegm, to fill into your foal's tiny air sacs and then harden. When the pus hardens, the lungs as a whole lose their flexibility to open completely. Over time, because of this loss of flexibility, the horse's muscles inside the lungs also weaken. This then leads to the lungs opening less and consistently slower. Now although pneumonia is rare in horses, it is extremely serious and often fatal to foals. Just like in a human baby, a foal takes nearly double the breaths per minute than an adult. The hardening of pus keeps the babies from not only breathing the proper amount per minute, but only taking in a small amount of air per breath. The main and often most fatal pathogen that affects foals is called Rhodococcus equi pneumonia. This pathogen not only affects foals, but many types of animals and humans. It was first discovered in 1923 by a scientist named Magnussen, located out of Sweden. He isolated this organism from the foal's lungs and presented the name Corne bacterium equi. Since then, there has been great confusion on the bacteria because it is legitimately known as Cornebacterium equi and Rhodococcus equi. With more research, Rhodococcus equi has been found in cattle, goats, swine, sheep, crocodiles, wild birds, deer, seals, marmosets, and koala bears. Then finally, in 1967, a 29 year old man with hepatitis who worked at a stockyard cleaning pens was identified with Rhodococcus equi. Since then, this pathogen has become extremely deadly to humans who are immunocompromised or have HIV. In foals, however, Rhodococcus equi primarily affects them from one to five months of age, and after six months, the bacteria is rarely seen. Now, you may be asking yourself, what is the similar factor between immunocompromised humans and my foal? Well, it all comes down to how the foal's immune system evolves from birth. When a foal is born, their immune system is completely different than an adult horse. 
Their immune system is made up of one part that fights infections outside of the cells and a second part that fights infections inside of the cells. Rhodococcus equi affects the inside of a foal's cell. Just like in human cells, a horse has T helper white blood cells. These have a specific job to only create antibodies. For pneumonia, they are supposed to create an inflammatory antibody or mediator. However, a newborn foal cannot produce nearly as many of these mediators as a two-week-old foal. The older they get, the more mediators they are capable of producing. Basically, a foal's immune system is depressed, just like a human with HIV, until it reaches about six months of age. At six months of age, the foal is finally able to be weaned from its mother. For what reason? Not just because it can feed itself, but because their immune system is fully developed and they no longer need the antibodies that its mother mi mother's milk provides. A foal also naturally eats manure. This actually provides the foal with the proper microorganisms to help its digestive system. The only problem with this is that Rhodococcus equi is found in 50 to 95 percent of all soil on farms and is highly concentrated in manure. This means that if the dirt on your farm has Rhodococcus equi and you have 20 babies on your farm, all 20 babies have been exposed to this pathogen either by inhalation, getting a cut and having dirt build up in it, or by eating manure that has the bacteria in it. It has been estimated that in one tablespoon of dirt, there's about one million Rhodococcus equi bacteria. Not only does this bacteria live in dirt and manure, but it is able to live and thrive in the intestinal tract of foals under 12 weeks old. These facts are the reason why Rhodococcus equi is so deadly and rampant on bleed breeding farms. The next thing we need to learn is how we identify this lethal pathogen in foals. This part can be extremely tricky. Some foals show no symptoms until they are already dead or dying. Others show symptoms and have a very minuscule case of Rhodococcus equi. When they do show symptoms, they are not symptoms of pneumonia, but symptoms of an abscess in the foal's lungs. An abscess is always the way pneumonia starts. As the abscess gets worse, the symptoms do as well. These symptoms include anorexia, lethargy, a slight mucus discharge, fever, rapid breathing, and a lack of response to normal antibiotics. A cough with wheezing may also be present. Now remember the definition of pneumonia. It is an infection of the lungs. Well, Rhodococcus equi can be an infection of any part of the foal's body, including its abdomen and joints. This type of pneumonia gives 50% of foals ulcerative colitis as well. Foals who also have ulcerative colitis will show signs of diarrhea, weight loss, and fluid in the abdomen. So if we can't easily identify this bacteria, then how do our vets do it? Your vet will take three main steps to diagnose Rhodococcus equi. First, they will listen to the foal's lungs for any distressed lung sounds with a stethoscope. Then your vet will perform an ultrasound on the foal's lungs to search for any abscesses. Lastly, your vet will collect a sample from the foal's lower trachea. This process is called a transtracheal wash. They then use this sample to perform a gram stain, bacterial culture, virus isolation, an antibody test, look for lungworms, and to study the cells. After your vet has determined a positive diagnosis, a treatment plan is then established. It has been found that using a combination of antibiotics has tremendously, Im 
tremendously improve the survival rate of foals compared to using any single antibiotic. Your vet will prescribe this antibiotic combination for a four to nine week duration. During this time, they may also intravenously, or using a saline mist, help the foal to cough up any phlegm. If the foal still presents a fever, then your vet will prescribe NSAIDs, and if the foal has severe difficulty breathing, they will provide oxygen treatments. Our job will then be to keep the foal in a clean, comfortable, isolated environment with plenty of dust-free feeds and fresh water. Immediate veterinary attention is absolutely necessary to avoid devastating effects on your foal's prognosis. According to the Merck Manual, the survival rate of foals with Rhodococcus equine pneumonia is approximately 70% with appropriate therapy. Without therapy, or inappropriate therapy, the death rate is about 80%. The future prognosis for athletic performance is also good in foals who are treated early. Other foals may present breathing difficulties the rest of their life if they live along with ulcerative colitis. Probably the most important question we can ask ourselves is how do we prevent rhodococcus equine pneumonia? As full owners, we should provide a well-ventilated, dust-free location to keep our foals in, and also avoid dirt paddocks and overcrowding. We should ensure to not feed our foals on the ground, but provide a clean method to keep their food as dust-free as possible. Also, there is a vaccination with antibodies that fights against Rhodococcus equi that should be given to the foals their first day of life. In the case there is an infected foal on your farm, you need to quarantine the foal and dispose of all manure to a separate quarantined area. A vet should also be called out regular, regularly to perform exams and take blood work to quickly detect any other possible infected foals. Rhodococcus equine pneumonia is such a fatal bacteria and so difficult to detect that the best method of treatment is really prevention. Foals are so spunky and bright, just ready to start their life, and since we are the ones choosing to bring them into the world, it is our job to keep them safe once they're here. We must educate ourselves so we can keep our foals safe from birth until they're ready to be retired. And one day, when we are riding them, I believe they will in turn provide the same protection for us.